given f of x that is equals to 2x multiplied by x squared minus 9x plus 24 8.1 show that p where the x coordinate is 3 and the y coordinate 36 is a point on the graph of f two marks quite surprising so we're interested in p of coordinates 3 and 36 if it is a point on f when we substitute 3 we are supposed to get 36 so 2 multiplied by 3 x is we're trying to show that x is equal to 3 and y is 36 is a point on that function so we substitute 3 in place of x minus 9 multiplied by 3 plus 24 right so let me put that in my calculator i have 6 multiplied by 9 minus 27 plus 24 and that is 36 so indeed p is a point on this function two marks let's take a look at 8.2 so <laughs> 8.2 8 calculate the coordinates of the turning points of the graph of f okay so turning points we are thinking about gradient the fact that it is equal to zero so we need to derivate this function but let's multiply out with 2x so that we can use the power rule when we derivate f of x is equal to 2x to the 3 minus 18x squared plus 48x so now we can go ahead and find f prime of x well this is 6x squared minus 36x plus 48 and we need to let these be equals to zero if we want to find the x coordinates of our turning points where the gradient is zero so we can divide throughout by six to make our life more simple so x squared minus 6x plus 8 should be equals to zero factors of 8 of which when we add we get minus 6 x minus 4 x minus 2 so x is equals to 4 or x is equals to 2 these are the x coordinates of our turning points but we're looking for the actual coordinates so we then need to find f of 4 here and here we need f of 2 so f of 4 2 4 to the power 3 minus 8 x is 4 we square that plus 48 x is 4 here i'm getting 32 and then what about f of 2 f of 2 we substitute in 2 throughout so let me just replace 2 4 with 2 and see what we end up with i'm getting 40 here in place of 2 so here we go we have the coordinates of the turning points well let's write it in let's write them in coordinate form 4 goes with 32 and 2 goes with 40 but we know from 8.1 that this is another idea we are done with this question i'm just thinking about something else we know about uh, from 8.1 that 3 goes with 36 i'm trying to see if this makes sense right 4 goes with 32 oh well let's start here 2 with 40 3 with 36 4 with 32 okay that's fine that's fine yeah if 3 which is between 2 and 4 was not following some sort of pattern i would be yeah skeptical about our answer here so this <laughs> these are the answers here these are the turning points right uh, i don't know why this math is exciting me today but uh let's let's just solve the problems um 8.3 drawing it sketch graph of f indicate the coordinates of any intercepts with the axis and of the turning points okay so let's gather our information tp 4 32 2 40 okay let's find our y intercept where we let x be equals to zero so y intercept will be equals to um <laughs> if we substitute zero into this equation everything cancels out and we just end up with 
y is equals to zero here. Yeah? So where we have the y, we actually have one x intercept because we have zero and zero here. Yeah? So this is the coordinate zero and zero. Okay, now let's find the x intercepts. So the x intercepts, we need to let y be equals to zero. So we're going to get 2x x squared minus 9x plus 24 being equals to zero. We already know that x is equals to zero is one of the x intercepts. Okay, but we then need to find the other two from this part here. x squared minus 9x plus 24 is equals to zero. Okay, um, so with x squared minus 9x plus 24, let me just use the quadratic formula and see what I end up with here. Uh, x is equals to plus 9 because we have minus 9 there, plus of minus the square root of, well, 9 squared, minus 9 squared, that is 81 minus 4ac minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 24, so 24. Everything divided by 2a, divided by 2, so x is equals to. Let me substitute that in my calculator. Well, um, 81 minus 4 minus 24. Hmm, issues are arising here. 81 <laughs> minus 4 multiplied by 24. Uh, this gives me undefined. This gives me undefined. So I don't think we have any other um, intercepts here. Because this gives me undefined, right? But we don't have any real rules there. So our x-intercept is just the y-intercept, which is at zero. So, okay, that is what we have there. That is what we have. Um, so I, I think we're ready to sketch. We have the intercepts. We have the asymptote. Well, not asymptote. We have the tangent points. Uh, I think we are good to go. I think we can sketch here. So our axis... That is the y this is the x okay let's start with the intercepts right here at the origin we have an intercept right here at the origin so we are interested in the origin we are interested here in the origin and we also have the turning points 4 and 32 when x is equals to 4 we have a turning point of 32 and when x is equal to 2 we have a turning point of 40 when x is equal to 2 okay so let's find that um for two goes with 40 so 2 and 40 they can be somewhere here and then 4 goes with 32 so let's put it somewhere here Okay, and then what else are we looking for? What else are we looking for? I think that is actually all. I think that is actually all. So we are expecting something like this. Let's see. Ah, oh, that looks horrible. Um, let me just give that another try. Uh, okay, this is another turning point. So we turn and then we go up. Okay, so <laughs> so this is what we actually have here. This is what we actually have. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Uh, this is what we actually have. All right. It kind of makes sense because we only have one x intercept. So we don't expect the graph to go back and cut x once more. So that is uh, what we end up with there. Okay. That is uh, 8.3. Neat sketch. Okay. Um, maybe I should not put x there. I should put it here. Don't think it really matters. But it's fine. It's fine can deal with that 8.4 determine the values of k for which the function being equals to k has three unequal roots okay 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 i see what is happening here we have 2x x squared minus 9x plus 24 being equals to k but we know that this is f of x so f of x is equals to k f of x minus k is equals to zero so we need the values of k for which that is oh that will have um three unequal roots three unequal roots so k is shifting the graph some units down right but if k is positive obviously it's gonna shift the graph some units up 
So, okay, what do we need? We need to know the y value at 2. The y value at 2 is 40. Okay, uh, it will become apparent why we need that y value at 2. Now, let me just uh, trace uh, this function. Uh, you're going to see very soon why I'm doing that. So I retrace the function. <laughs> Let me try and grab it and see if... Okay, there. So at this point, we have one... The question is saying we must look for three unequal roots. Okay, at this point, we have one root at the origin. If we move down here, we already we only have one root, right? Because k can only move the function up and down. Okay, let's say we move up... We are always going to have one root if we keep moving up. So we need to move down in order to have a chance of having three roots. Okay, if we move down here, how many roots? We have only one. We only have one. If we move here, we only have one. But if we move to this point here, let's stay there at that point. If we move at that point, we have two, right? But the second one also acts as an intercept. So K needs to at least move the... K needs to at least move the, the what? Needs to at least move the y value at the at that turning point, at the minimum, to touch the x-axis. So k needs to be at least, at least, it needs to be at least equal to it needs to be at least equal to uh the y value at 4. The y value at 4 is 32. K needs to be at least equal to 32. Okay, so in the scenario that we have in front of us, K is equal to 32. In that scenario, we have moved the function 32 units down. What about these? Okay, that would be two. That will be two unequal rules. That would be two. So we are not interested in that. We need K to actually be at least greater than 32 because at that point, we have two unequal, right? One here and one here but we need a three so k needs to be at least greater than 32 let me show you what happens then okay so here k is greater than 32 we have moved the function more than 32 units down here greater than 32 here greater than 32 and our condition is satisfied here take a look at this we have this root one the second root and the third root so our condition is satisfied there is satisfied there so when k is greater than 32, uh, we're quite happy. We have achieved what we're looking for. But take a look at this. Take a look at this. Let me just grab that function. When we move to this point, issues arise again. Issues arise again. We are at a point where um, if the y value at 2 is touching the x-axis, we have two unequal rows. So issues are going to arise. If we have two unequal, we need a three, okay? So we need k to be greater than 32, but we need k to be less than the y at x is equal to two, which is which is 40, which is 40. So let's write that in one statement. We are saying that we need k to be greater than 32, but k to be less than 40. In that way, we're going to have three unequal rows. Okay, there we go. 8.5, determine the maximum value of f of x if x is an element of 0, 2, 5. Okay, so let's get rid of this now. Um, we're interested in this portion, 0 to 5. We are looking for the maximum value of x between 0 and 5, the maximum value. So we know that f of x... We also have f prime of x. We have determined it some way. Uh, let me look for it. f prime of x. 6x squared. 6x squared minus 36x plus 48. Minus 36x plus 48. Plus 48. Plus 48. That is f prime of x. So we want the maximum. We can easily derivate this and equate it to 0, right? So take a look at this. 6x <laughs> squared minus 36x plus 48 is equal to 0. What did we do last time? We divided by 6. We got x squared minus 6x plus 8 being equal to 0. And then we factorize factors of 8. Okay. 
x minus 4 multiplied by x minus 2. This gives us 0. So x is equals to 4 or x is equals to 2. Okay, so these are our values x equals to 4 or x equals to 2. So which one gives us a greater y value between x equals to 4 and x equals to 2? At x equals to 2, we have 40. At x equals to 4, we have 32. So clearly here, we have to go with x is equals to 2 because we know that y here is 40 and y here is 32. So we go with x is equals to 2. The maximum value here, y is equals to 40. We are looking for the maximum value. I almost forgot the equation there.